For this next part, what we're going to do is we're going to work on getting the traffic camera data cleaned up and into a format that we can use in the rest of our program. So City of Toronto's done a nice thing. They've made a whole bunch of data available to us, but it's not necessarily in a format that we can consume in our program. So what you often have to do when you're building web apps like this is you have to take in some piece of data and you have to transform it, clean it up, or make it into the format that you're going to need to use in your program. So if we take a look at this uh, traffic camera data again, I just want to take you through quickly what's in here and what we need to do. Every camera has a number and it's a string, so 8001, and that number is going to be used in a bunch of places in order to generate URLs. So we have a name, which is the name of the street, we have latitude and longitude information. However, they've given it to us as strings. So everything in here is a string. And what we're going to need to do is convert those to numbers. So that's a to-do item. And then they give comparison directions. So basically, if you stand in the middle of the intersection and if you look north, is there an image? And if there is, then you're going to get uh, a letter. So the Direction 1 is north and there is an image, direction 2 is east and there is an image and so on. And we need to use these in order to generate a bunch of URLs. So they give us some information about how these URLs are structured and essentially it goes like this. Every camera URL and what you do is you go and you find the particular image and they're all coded by location. So you use location, then the camera's number, and then JPG. So for example, I have a camera right here, and this camera is using the base URL, and then at the end I've got, let's see here, I've got location 8001.jpg. So what we need to do is we need to generate these URLs for all of our data, and we need to do the same thing for our comparison image which are in all the different directions. So we have the location, we have the camera's number, and then we have a direction. So for example, if we're looking east or we're looking west, etc. So if I had uh, this cam, you know, I could do it for each one of my cameras. I'll do it in a second when we, um, when we go and take a look at this. So what I want to do is I want to transform this data. And I think because I'm going to make changes to all these different uh, data record so I've got each one of these as an object and I, I need to transform it. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a little bit more code in here to help me out. Now every time you're going to write a program where you have to work with lots and lots of objects of the same type, a common thing that we'll do is we'll create a constructor so that we can construct new instances of these things. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to create a function called camera and camera is going to take one argument which is it's going to take in some data and eventually I'm going to be able to call this function so I'll be able to say uh, new camera and I'll pass in some data and it will generate a new new um, new camera for me and actually what I'll do is I'll just write the basic bare bones piece of this right now so I have traffic cameras is equal to an array and this array if I just shrink up my file here. So I'm going to use Visual Studio Code to collapse this down and you can see that I have hundreds and hundreds of rows. Well I'm going to take this array and I'm going to run map on it. And so what map lets me do is pass in a function where I'm going to receive some data which is going to be one row of data from the cameras array and I'm going to return a new camera passing in that data. So now whatever I do in this function here, I'm going to be able to pass all of the data through this. And this is going to be like a filter or it's going to be at the place where I do all of my cleanup code. And when I'm done, traffic cameras is going to be equal to the original data mapped through this function or every one of those elements run through the function so that we have all the data that we need. So what should we do inside of our uh, camera constructor function? Well, we need to extract all the pieces that we care about. Now, a couple things to note. You notice how they've named their data. They use capitals for everything. Capital number, capital name, capital latitude, etc. And so when we're working in JavaScript, we tend to use Pascal case 
like so, and we have the first character as a lowercase character. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up some of the naming in this so that it looks it looks closer to what I would expect. So because I'm in a constructor function and because I am passing in new, I'm going to say new camera, it means that I'm going to have access to the this keyword, which is going to be the instance of the object that's been created. So I can say this dot number is equal to data dot number as an example. So that means that when I get this data here, this object here, I can reach in and I can get the number capital N and I can take the value 8001 as a string and I can store it onto this dot number. I can do the same thing for the name and I'm going to do capital name there. And I can do the same thing for the latitude and the longitude. Now I'm going to shorten these down to lat and lon, L-N-G, just because I don't want to type this out all throughout my program. So I'm going to say this dot lat is equal to data dot latitude, like that. Now the problem is this is a string. So we have to take that string and we have to convert it to a number and you can see that the number that we want has decimal places so we need to work with floating point numbers so we're going to ask javascript we're going to say that we want to parse a floating point number from a string and i'm going to do the same thing for the longitude and i'm going to say parse float data okay the only thing that leaves that i'm interested in because there's other parts of this data that I don't really care about, but I'm interested in all this D1, D2, D3, D4. So I want to, I basically want to capture for each intersection, I want to know, is there something to the north? Is there something to the east? And so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another object here, which is going to store that data. So I'm going to say this dot directions is equal to an object. So I'm going to so I'm working on the camera object that's what this is and one of the properties is going to be an object and I'm going to put some values in here so I'm going to say direction 1 is equal to data.d1 now it has to be a capital because their data has a capital and I'll do the same thing for d2 data.d2 d3 data.d3 capital d3 and d4 data.d capital d4 so now I've got all my data stored on this instance and I'm going to now deal with these URLs. So for each one of these cameras, I need to be able to take the camera number and I need to combine it with this comparison image here, sorry, combine it with the camera image base URL that they list here in order to generate my URL. So here's what I could, here's one way I could do this. I could say this dot URL is equal to whatever my camera base URL is plus the, the number up here. So I could say plus, um, well, I'll put this here and I'll say plus this dot number plus dot JPG like that. So um, let's just confirm that I'm right. I'm almost right, but it looks like I need to have LOC, probably for location in front of it. So over here, I need to say LOC, and I would generate something like this. So every one of the cameras is going to have something like this, and I can either do it in the constructor, or another way that I could handle this is I could put this on my camera's prototype because I can generate it when I need it. And it's going to mean that I have less data stored in memory because what's going to happen is every single one of these cameras, hundreds of them, is going to have this exact same base URL and it's going to get stored over and over and over and there's no point. So why don't I put it on the prototype so that it gets shared with all of the cameras. So let's do that. I'm going to say camera.prototype dot get image URL is equal to a function. So this is a function that I will call when I have a camera. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say I have a base URL and my base URL is the URL that I just worked with up, up, up uh, previously. So I have my base URL and I want to I want to return a string which is the base URL combined with the rest of the of the pieces that I did up here, location, the number, etc. 
Now, this style of concatenating strings, I find that it's really easy to make mistakes doing it. And so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use a template string. So I'm going to say return. And instead of using single quotes or double quotes, I'm going to use back ticks. So inside my back ticks, I'm going to say that I want to interpolate or include base URL. So I want to take the variable that's here, base URL, and I want to put it first. After the base URL, I need a slash, and then LOC, and then followed after that, I need to have the camera number, so this dot number, and dot JPG, like so. So I'm gonna use the base URL, use the number that's on this instance, and I'm gonna put it all together into a string to get the image URL. So I don't need to do this anymore. And well, let's see if that works before we do anything else. So I'm going to save my file. And right now I can't work with this file because I don't have it in my uh, in my page at all. But I could work with this traffic cameras object. If I go to my console, I could say traffic cameras and press enter. And sure enough, I have 296 camera objects. And the reason they're camera objects is because I've passed them through the constructor. So I'm going to open this up and let's take a look at one of them. So here's camera zero. Camera zero has a number, has a name, has latitude, and you can see that it's been turned into a floating point number. It has longitude and it also has directions. Direction one is north, east, south, and west. So this looks pretty good. Now I'm also interested in knowing if my get image URL function is working. So let's write some more code. So I'm going to, I'm going to take traffic cameras and I'm going to get the first traffic camera back. So traffic camera zero, and I'm going to then call get image URL like so. And I'll do the same thing for the second camera, camera at position one. And you'll notice that for each one of these, it's done exactly what I want, 8001, 8002.jpg. So that's looking good. So the only thing I have to deal with now is I have to figure out a way to get URLs for all of these, what they're calling comparison images. And remember that the comparison images work in a similar way to the regular image, but they have this extra uh, direction. So east, west, etc. So I need to make something that looks like this. So I'm going to I'm going to come down here and I'm going to write another function to be able to do this. And what I'm hoping to create, I'm just going to copy and paste a little bit of code here to show you what I want to generate. Instead of a single URL, I want to be able to generate an array. And in my array, I want to have objects that have a URL and a direction. So I want to basically be able to get the north facing camera for this intersection and I want to specify that it's north, the east and specify that it's east, etc. all the way down. So I need to write a little bit of code to make this work. So again, I'm going to do this on the prototype and I'm going to call it get direction images is once again equal to a function. So I have to call this function in order for it to work. All right, so what should we do in here? The first thing I know that I need to do is I need to create an array. So I'm going to make an empty array and I'll call it something like direction images is equal to an empty array. So now basically what my function is going to do is it's going to fill up direction images with all of the objects that are going to look like this up here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a little bit of information off of the current instance. So I know that I'm going to need the number that's going to be important. And I know that I'm going to need to work with the directions. So I'm going to just pull those things off and put them into their own variable. So I'm going to say let directions equals this dot directions. And the same thing for the number. Let the number equal this dot number. What's nice about this is I can now refer to directions or number and I don't have to worry about this anymore. So it just it saves me a step. Okay, so now what I have to do is I have to go through and I have to process D1, D2, D3, D4 for each one of these. So let's try doing it just for D1. 
So I could say let uh, direction is equal to directions at um, directions one for the current instance. And then I would say if direction exists, because if there's nothing there, I don't want to do anything. I'm only going to do something if there's something there. So what am I going to do if there's something there? Well, I'm going to put a new object into my direction images array. So I know that what I'm going to do is I'm going to say direction images dot push and I'm going to push in a new object and my object eventually is going to have a URL and it's going to have a direction and we actually already know the direction because we just got it right here so I can put that I can put direction in here if I at this point so I have to figure out what the what the URL is going to be so the URL is going to be this again a base URL followed by the location of the intersection camera followed by the direction dot JPEG okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this first part the base part of this URL and because I'm gonna use it over and over again I'm just gonna say let base URL equals that I'm gonna store it in a variable alright so what are we gonna do down here we're gonna say take the base URL then we need a slash then I need location then I need the camera number then I need the direction and then I need dot jpg like so so base URL slash location slash the number whatever the camera number is 8001 followed by the direction and the direction is going to be north east southwest single letter dot jpeg we're going to take that put it into an object url and direction and we're going to push that into our direction images like so so now when i'm done doing that i should be able to return my direction images like so so let's save this and let's see if that works. We've only done it for the first direction, but let's see if it works so far. So I'm going to take my traffic cameras at zero, and I'm going to say get direction images, and it returns back to me an object, an array with an object, and the object has a URL, location 8001 north.jpg and a direction north. So we should test and see if this actually works. If I grab this URL, I'm going to copy it and I'm going to go to a new tab and paste it in and it does, it works. Here's the direction, the north direction being shown. So that's encouraging. Okay, so the only thing we have to do now is we have to do the exact same thing for D1, D2, D3 and D4. So what are my options? Well, the first thing I could do is I could copy and paste this four times and say, do this for direction one, direction two, direction three, and direction four. But as soon as you feel like you're gonna be copying and pasting things over and over again, it's good to pause for a second and say, could I reuse this code or could I somehow put this in a function? Like, wouldn't it be useful if I could somehow write a function around this code here and make use of it somehow so that I can do it over and over again and what if I could just specify the parts that are going to be different so I know I want to do d1 d2 d3 and d4 and basically I know I have a list of these keys that I need to work with so what if I just put those key names in an array and I said dot for each and I wrote my function and I passed in each one of those keys. So what I've got now, I'll just clean this up, is exactly the structure that I'm looking for. Instead of copying and pasting this code four times, I'm going to write an array that has four things in it, and I'm gonna loop for each of these. So I'm gonna run this function for D1, I'm going to run this function for D2, etc., all the way through. So I'm going to pass in this key. So I've got to modify my code because I can't use D1 anymore. I have to use this key. 
And because key is a variable, I'm going to switch to using this syntax. So if I had said directions.key, that means use the string key, like use the literal value key, but we don't have that. So what we're doing here is we're saying get the value that's stored in key and get it out of directions. So this now says get me the direction for D1 on the first loop through, D2, D3, D4. All right, so let's save this and let's test it, let's test it out. So I'm going to ask for traffic cameras at zero dot get direction, uh, get direction images. That returns to me an array of four things, which is exactly what I'm looking for. And I'm going to expand that. And now I've got one, two, three, four objects, a URL and a direction. So this is the north facing, east facing, south and west fa facing portion of, um, the, of the, the intersection. So this is great. What have we done? We've created a We've created a constructor function, which defines our type. And it says our camera has this kind of data that we're interested in working with. We've defined a couple of functions that we can use on the prototype of each one of those instances so that we can get back the data that we want. And then we define all this data, hundreds and hundreds of rows of it, and we map all of that data through our constructor function, which should clean it up nicely. So the last thing I'm going to do just to end off this portion of the project is I'm going to make use of this data. So right now we're defining traffic cameras here in this file, but I'm going to use it in my other file. So over here, the, I'm going to make one line of code in my index.js. You'll remember that we are currently loading the traffic camera data and then we're loading our index.js where we're going to use it. So basically I want to define my data here and I want to use my data here. So inside index.js, I'm going to do something really simple and I'm just going to say console.log traffic cameras. So when my web page loads, you can see that it's printed out all 296 of my cameras and all of them are ready to go. All the data is here. And um, the next thing